Hi, so it's time for week 14 garden tour and I wanted to have a little bit of a chat about some things about gardening. So let's take a look at what is growing indoors and what is growing outdoors and we will have a little talk. So it's Monday morning and I took a vacation day so happy coffee to me with my always favorite mug reminding me to enjoy the little things. So before we get into the whole tour, there's just a couple things I wanted to talk about because it's come up in some of my conversations I've been having with other micro homesteaders and I think it's important to talk about. So whether you're watching my channel or somebody else's channel, you have to remember that everybody's garden, where everybody lives, what country they're in is different. So there's very rarely a right way to do things. There may be a right for me or a right for you. There may be other things that where there's actually data to back it up and it's a better way to do it. Your soil is going to be different than my soil. I feel like a lot of people on YouTube or on the web or anywhere actually, it doesn't really matter. Everybody's got their own opinion and more often than not, they put it off as the way and not a way. So. I try very hard when I'm talking to you guys um, not to say this is what you should do, to say this is what I do or this is what's worked for me. So just try and keep it in mind to just take information from as many people as you can. Watch as many channels, like get as much data. Um, look at people that are in your area. Look at people that have your soil. Look at, uh, just look at everything. Take it in and try not, don't get discouraged because there's millions of people in the world, so many people garden, and so many different people might be telling you conflicting things. That's okay, because like I said, that might be what works for them versus what works for somebody else. So you can just try one versus try another. Try, um, if there's somebody that's closer to you, maybe try that first to see if that works for you. But it really is a journey when you're gardening. It's figuring out what's going to, and I've said this many times before, and I will continue to say it. It's figuring out what works for you and your garden, where you are now, with the climate that you have now. Climates, things change. Um, I was always in 5B, but if you look at some other things online now, it's saying I'm zone six. So I don't even know what I am anymore. Biggins playing with her toy. So I don't even know technically what my zone is anymore. And also keep in mind that things are averages. So if it says your frost date is on a day, that doesn't mean it's going to be on that day. You might have your last frost two weeks before. You might have your last frost three weeks after. It's an average. Um, so you have to kind of go with your gut, look at what's um, coming up in the weather, though we always know the weather's never completely right, but, and keep your own data. I think that's, I'm going to be doing a blog post on this coming up about data being, in my opinion, one of the most underused things in micro homesteading and gardening, um, because you're going to know your experience is better than anyone else, but if you don't write it down and keep track of it, um, then it's very hard to leverage that moving forward. But we'll get into that in another post. But basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is try not to get overwhelmed, especially if you're getting started. Listen to as much information as you can. Um, and if something works for you and according to everybody else, it shouldn't, who cares? If it works for you, it works for you. Keep doing it. Um, and then also something that you've done many times before may suddenly not work anymore. We'll get to that when we go downstairs and look at my sad little onion seedlings. I've done onions every single year. They've worked amazing. This year they're not. This year I'm probably going to have to pick up some starts. So I'm not going to have all the different types of onions that I would typically have. I've got an I'll put a link up above to my onion seedling starting video. It's worked for me every other year. This year it's not. So I'm going to have to pivot. I'm going to have to do something a little bit different. And part of that is I'm starting some more onion seeds again. Is it ideal? Absolutely not. I started those other ones in like February, I think, because they're supposed to be, again, supposed to be started eight to 12 weeks before setting out and setting out is supposed to be three to four weeks before my last frost. My last frost is trending somewhere around May 9th to May 15th. So these guys should be already well along their way to going out, but I'm going to try. Will I get as many onions? Probably not. Will they be as big as usual? Nope, they're not going to be, but I'll still get some onions. So it's also about not expecting perfection and not expecting everything to work. 
because it won't. There's going to be something. There's going to be something that goes wrong, something that you didn't expect. Our mother nature is just going to say, screw you guys. This is what I'm doing today. And you're going to have to deal with it. Keep trying. Um, try not to get discouraged. The fact that you're doing something, even if it doesn't work, you will still take lessons from that. And you can do more or pivot or do things a little differently next year, later in the season. All is not lost if things don't go right at the beginning of the season. Recently just come up with my month to month garden planner. It's in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, but basically the whole point of it is you don't plant once. You can plant every single month. So if some of the seedlings you've started now don't work, you know what? Try and grab some plants from the nursery so you still have something. Try again with seeds later on. Just keep trying. And there's certain things that don't have to be started now. There's certain things that shouldn't be started now. And the things that shouldn't be started for me may be different than the things that shouldn't be started where you are because your zone's completely different. So just don't get discouraged, guys. Keep trying. If you have any questions about anything, you can always post it in the comments or send me an email. I'm always more than happy to try and help um, and at least tell you what I've done. And then you can take that and see if it works for you. Oh, I think Tuck, he's gonna, you gonna sing a song, Tuck? He's gonna sing a song. I'll have some coffee while he does that. So that's enough about that, but I just wanted to have that chat, especially now with people, oh, well, people in, in like my climates starting all their seedlings. Um, I just, I hate to see it when people are discouraged, but I also hate to see it when people think it's always gonna go perfect because it really won't. And that's okay. Especially the whole point of micro homesteading is to become more self-sufficient but that doesn't happen overnight um, and there's still things that go wrong so it's also about developing backup plants so as a micro homesteader you're probably not relying just on what you grow or, or create um, so the backup plan as I mentioned might be going to a nursery it might be trading with somebody else who seeds or your, whose onion seedlings grew amazing this year. Maybe their tomatoes didn't and you could give them some tomato seedlings for some onion seedlings. So it's about becoming more resourceful as well um, and just building up that muscle because I know at least for myself as a micro homesteader, my end goal is to have a much more full homestead, to have five to eight acres of land, to be much, much more self-sufficient. So for me, micro homesteading is a step on my micro homesteading journey. It's not where I'll end up and who knows where you'll end up. But right now my goal is to have that land, to have my animals and to be much more self-sufficient. So this is building that muscle. This is building those tools so I will have them later on um, to have more um, to be more successful. So it doesn't matter if you're watching this and you live in an apartment and you don't think you can homestead, you sure can. You could get a hydroponic system like I have the rise garden back there. Um, you could just be growing things on your windowsill. If you have a deck, you could be growing things on there. It is amazing how much food my mother can grow on her little deck in her apartment in downtown Toronto. So you can still try. You can compost in your apartment if you use a Bokashi composter. I'll have a video coming out on that soon. So there's always something you can do. There's something you can do to become more self-sufficient. Maybe you just start making bread. Maybe you focus on getting out of debt. So just don't limit yourself. Always look to um, building a skill, even if it's not all the skills. No one learns everything all at once. You learn it a bit at a time as you experience more, as you have failures. Failures are one of the most important learning tools that you can have because it means that there is a gap in what you were doing before or you experienced a new situation that you hadn't before. And so it's a learning experience. So it's also trying to celebrate some of those failures um, to lead to even bigger successes in the future. But that is enough about that. We need to see what's changed on the homestead. So I'm gonna stop talking, well, for like 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna flip the camera and I'll show you guys what's changed around here in two weeks. Okay, so things are going crazy in the rise garden. And there's also a lot of other seedlings around here because I don't have enough grow lights. And we'll see that even more when we go downstairs. So I am making the most of what I have and I keep just rotating these guys around so that they are just getting light on different sides. 
so the lettuce in the back is looking great. I've already harvested a bunch from this, done some lettuce wraps, um, and I just keep picking from the outside and then the inner leaves keep going. Um, we've got a little bit of browning. Ooh, that was kind of crispy. Got some crispiness on the edge because I do not have a fan, even though I always say we need a fan. Um, but I just, it wasn't in the budget right now. So uh, hopefully soon I'll be getting another fan for up here and that will help with the air circulation. Um, so I'll just get rid of some of those crispy leaves um, and go from there. Strawberries are getting huge. These are the Alpine red strawberries. Um, I've got an orange peach tomato, which is a really cool tomato. Um, it's my first year growing it. It's actually supposed to have uh, a fuzzy skin on it. Um, so that will and have a peachy flavor. So that'll be interesting. Stevia is getting big. I'm going to have to pick those other lettuce leaves so it's got a bit more light. Dill, as dill does, was tiny and spindly and is now getting crazy big. Um, I love these uh, supports, the rise supports just to kind of keep it all organized because otherwise it would be all over the place. Um, I also have some new strawberries. These are the yellow alpine, I believe. Um, and then we have uh, my little tomato. I can't get over this thing. So this is the orange micro hot tomato from Baker Creek. We are sitting at about pushing it at six inches. And I already have, I think I counted, there was like 20 something blossoms on here. We've already got some flowers forming. So this guy's pretty much not gonna get any taller. So it's kind of perfect for in the uh, for in the hydroponic systems. Well, I mean, I've still got loads of space where I could have grown height, but that's just not what uh, these guys do. Very soon I will be getting my big rise garden. So I'm super, super excited. So I will do a video on the unboxing and the setup of that. It's got a Dr. Dr. White Cheese, I think it is, Dr. White Cheese. Um, that's my first year growing that one. So we'll see how that goes. Um, bunch of sweet peppers, a uh, monster, yellow monster, and alesia. Some of these tendril um, peas. I'm pretty excited about these ones. They are a purple sugar snap, um, and they've got all these crazy tendrils on them, which peas have, but these ones have like a lot. I don't even have the seed packet out anymore. I think I put it away. And then just a whole bunch more peppers over here, some hot, some sweet, and they are just getting what light they can. Um, as you can see, I've mentioned this before, everything is in a tray so that I can bottom water um, because that is super, super important. All right, so that's everything up here. Let's go look at the craziness downstairs. Okay, so we're in the basement. So again, audio is crap, video is crap, but we'll make the most of it because that's where everything is. Okay, so there are a ton of seedlings. Some of these tomatoes are huge. These ones were planted at the same time as the ones upstairs, so it just shows you the different like variations that you can have. Um, this one is, again, this one is a sunrise, which is massive compared to the sunrise upstairs, and this one is an orange accordion. So have just the one grow light, unfortunately, um, which needs to be raised because it should be about four to six inches above, but these guys have grown a huge amount in a short period of time, so it needs to be raised. Um, I have some more strawberries over here. Obviously, I have some nasturtiums here, which you can see. This is what I would call leggy seedlings. This is absolutely not ideal, but it was the only light I had, and I was trying to make the most of it. Um, but I really just need some more lights and then see if I can sort those guys out. Um, so lighting is key. Um, and the bottom watering. So down here, we have my sad situation with my onions, as I mentioned. It's important to know that not everything goes perfectly. You can see here I've got some nice green ones that I just started again. Um, but some of the other ones, like here, these guys were doing great and then suddenly they turned into that. So if anyone has any suggestions about what might be going on this year, uh, let me know because I'm not sure what's going on right now. And then over here, still dealing with the thrips which is not going well so I think a lot of this is just going to get clear well this needs to be cleaned out anyways that's a whole fiasco I keep saying I'm going to do it but I actually need to do it um and then I think this is just going to be abandoned because sometimes you just can't win um and then we'll get this all redone and uh hopefully things will go a bit better 
So let's go check out outside and then next time we come down here, this will be full of seedlings and hopefully looking a bit cleaner and a bit better. Okay, so I'm out here in the garden. I actually got some cleaning done yesterday, so I'm happy about that because I shot, I shut a lot of my garden down at the end of the year, at the end of last year, but I didn't do all of it. But I did more than I usually do. So my goal for 2021 is to shut it down properly at the end of the season. So we'll see how that goes. In this bed right down here, I have uh, some of my garlic, which I planted in the fall because I do the fall garlic. It's actually coming up. So I had uh, kind of mulched with some of this straw, which um, was great I got it from the Halloween decorations so I've moved it off a little bit from the garlic just to get them a little bit more sun and green them up a bit um, and then once they start getting a bit taller I'll just put the mulch back around them it's just what I'm trying this year so we'll see how it goes I've now haven't mulched before with straw um, not sure if I'll do it again but we'll see how it goes this year I had it and it was somebody actually my neighbor was throwing it out and I grabbed it on garbage day so we'll see how it goes if not I'll pivot and do something else next year but we'll see so let's take a look at the garlic so you can see some of the garlic is coming up i think i counted about 27 of them um these ones are really strong so these ones on this side i bought jumbo cloves um, and the ones on the other side which are probably a little bit harder to see so the big cloves that are on this side were the jumbo cloves that i bought and the ones on the other side were some smaller ones from ones that i had grown so one of the key things about when you're growing garlic is to make sure you always get the biggest cloves you can so we can see the difference already in the ones that were giant cloves versus the smaller ones they've grown bigger they've grown stronger and the bulbs that i'm going to get for those are going to be much bigger than the other ones that said they didn't have much when I went to go buy it even though I bought it on like the first day just it sold out so quickly um, so I got as much as I could and I had some other garlic so I planted it are they gonna be as big as the jumbo ones nope but I will get more garlic than if I hadn't even planted those other ones so you just do what you can okay so let's go over here check out the blueberry situation so I'm just gonna flip the camera So these guys are coming along really well. So far this is the only one that looks like it did really well. Unfortunately, I think I've mentioned it before, but it is the uh, Chippewa and not the pink lemonade that I was desperately trying to grow. So I think this is one of my pink lemonades. There's not much going on on it, but you never know. We'll see what happens. It's kind of crazy to me that the one that was sitting in the pot on top is the one that looks the healthiest as opposed to the ones that I did get into the ground. So this one is another one of, this one's another one of the pink lemonade. And I'm pretty sure this one is too. This, so this one looks like it's got something going on, um, but it's not progressing very much. So we'll have to wait and see. But I'm really hoping that, uh, that some of the pink lemonades made it. Like at least I'll have this one, but uh, we shall see. One of the things I got done yesterday was I actually got out here and cleared out what were my tomato pots last year. Not sure what I'm gonna put in here this year, but they're all pretty much cleaned out, all the whole row of them. So that will be good. What else do we have? Let's go over to the berry bushes because they've got some more going on. So the black currant is coming back stronger than ever. This thing looks amazing. And I showed it before, but super good news, at least from my mom, because the gooseberry plant is coming back. I'm not sure what got it last year, but it's doing good. And up here on the blackberries, there are signs of life as well. So this fiasco, it was really low here, so I was kind of just composting everything back here. So Rose of Sharon there, that's going to be coming out um, because it really brings in the Japanese beetles um, and it just gets destroyed. And super exciting news, I am hopefully this year, but we'll see, I'm going to be putting in a little greenhouse here. 
Well, I'm super excited about the greenhouse. Um, I did find some plans online um, just to use as a guide. I'm going to come up with my own and kind of tweak it a bit because there's definitely some changes that I want to make. And then assuming it all works well, I will be putting the plans up and do a whole like video and blog post and everything on making this greenhouse. Um, assuming everything works out. So stay tuned for that because I'm pretty sure once I have it, I'm not going to go back in the house and just live out in the greenhouse with all my seedlings. Uh, let's go take a look at what's growing down the side and in the front. Okay, so rhubarb is coming along pretty well. I love it. it's the first one to come up. Still not much going on with the grapes. Maybe a little bit but the stems are looking better but we'll see how they do uh, mint of course is coming back everywhere but that's okay and then over here in the strawberry bed there are some definite signs of life so that is always exciting now let's go around the front so I think, I think we've decided what we're doing for these beds. We're going to have them about, it's going to be 12 foot in between. So there'll be some on the end there. And there's a gorgeous peony on this end that we're going to leave. And then all in here is just going to be the raised bed. So some more blueberries out here. Something going on. We've got some flowers I'm going to have to relocate. Some crocuses and some little irises. The inadvertent blackberry is coming to life, though this blueberry is not looking good at all. But we'll see what happens. Sage is already coming back. And then this mess here is some oregano, which, oh, well, I can see some greenery. Some oregano there. And then we have lemon balm and mint which will come back because i couldn't get rid of it if i tried though i'm probably gonna have to tame it a little bit um with the new beds going in but we'll see there's some of the mint already over there and we actually had some lettuces out here and those look like lettuces to me so those ones seeded and went over the winter so Looks like I'll have some lettuce out front. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And let me know down in the comments below, what are you, what's changed in your garden um, this last week? What are you planting? What are you hardening off? What's going on? Do you have any questions? Let me know what your questions are and then I will try and make videos to answer them. So this week I'll be starting to harden off some of my frost hardy vegetables. Um, so I'll give an update on those next week. And have a great week guys. And I will see you for next week's garden tour. And until next time, go out there and make food grow. Hello, bacon. Bacon, say hello. Wow, should we go inside? What are you doing? You gonna be a sun bunny? Or are you gonna come inside? We don't know. <laughs>